I'm the 5-Minute Professor, and this is part 2 of my list of the 10 logical fallacies which are sometimes presented in arguments. The first one that we want to start with here in part number 2 is the post hoc or false cause argument. And this is something I've been using for years. In 1953, more Armenian immigrants came to this country than any year before or since. In 1953, Oregon had more forest fires than any year before or since. So, we can conclude that Armenian immigrants caused forest fires in Oregon. Or, or maybe we can't. Maybe there isn't always a direct correlation between two facts. Just because you can say there's a correlation doesn't actually mean that there is a correlation. Ad ignorantum which essentially says, if I can't understand your argument, your argument doesn't make sense. It really means, I'm too stupid to understand your argument, and therefore, I don't think your argument makes sense, which doesn't necessarily mean that it's true. I have this argument a lot with people, and you'll be surprised to learn this. I, I sometimes argue with people, and I sometimes try and fix people that are wrong on Facebook, and sometimes I get very busy doing that for long periods of time. But the ad ignorantum argument is best exemplified with this type of example. If evolution is so cool and we evolved from chimpanzees, how come there are still chimpanzees? Well, where's the, where's the ignorance in that statement? Well, we, we didn't actually evolve from chimpanzees. Chimpanzees evolved and we evolved. They don't understand evolution. Number three is the bandwagon fallacy, which you'll hear a lot in advertising. 10,000 people can't be wrong. This is a popular opinion. It must be true and no, no, popular opinion does not need to be true. In fact, I would take it a step farther. I actually believe that individual people can be wise and just and reasonable and thoughtful, but people? People are stupid, like box of rocks dumb when they get to be people. There is a reason that there is culture and popular culture. It's because people are dumb. Number four. The burden of proof reversal. In, in debating, this is the ultimate, no, you are. If I say that I don't believe the world was literally created in seven days, including a rest-related day, some 64,000 years ago, and then you, because this is your argument, and you say to me, well, prove to me that it wasn't created 64,000 years ago. Why do I have to prove your argument is wrong when I can instead prove that my argument has more basis? Now, typically when I have this type of argument, the way that it ends up is we're going to have to agree to disagree. And I never say that. But people say that to me because I never say you may be right. And the tenth, and my favorite of all of the logical fallacies that you may hear during this political season, the non sequitur, an assumption or an argument that goes from one point to another without there being any logical connection between the two. And this is absolutely my favorite one. Well, he's a great successful businessman and he tells it like it is. Therefore, he should be president of the United States. Perceptum, quispium, Damnatium! Learn something dagnabbit! The 10 logical fallacies that are often found in what passes for debate. An ad hominem attack or to attack the messenger. The straw man fallacy. The false dichotomy. The hasty generalization. Begging the question post hoc or false cause argument. Ad ignorantum. The bandwagon fallacy. 
the burden of proof reversal. The non sequitur. They're called the ten logical fallacies. Perceptum, quispium, damnitium. Learn something, damn it. I'm the Five Minute Professor, and thank you very much for listening to today's lesson. If you have any comments at all, please put them in the comments section down below. And of course, like it and subscribe to the channel. But most important, if you liked it, if you commented, and if you subscribed, tell your friends. Perceptum, quispium, damnitium. Learn something, damn it.